Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Business. Markets ended in the green but were off the day's high, a second consecutive day of gains and the indices closed at a four-week high. IT and healthcare were the top sectoral gainers. Alex Matthew with the wrap of all the market action. Equity markets in India ended in the green, but it was a bit of a wobbly end, particularly for the benchmark index, which dropped about 145 points from the high point of the day. It recovered some ground towards the end, and that's why we ended with gains of about half a percent or so for the Nifty 50. The broader markets also more or less kept pace with the mid-cap 150 index gaining about 0.6%. And the small cap index, the small cap 250, getting about 0.4%. There was quite a bit of selling in the benchmark heavyweight. So Reliance Industries, for example, and HDFC Bank saw quite a bit of selling. And there are suggestions that it was institutional selling, perhaps one or two institutions selling a basket of stocks, which is why you saw the impact on the benchmark index. Uh, you saw the Nifty Bank, in fact, end in the red after trading in the green for quite a bit of today's session. It ended with cuts of about 0.1% or thereabouts. You had IT that stood out as the top performer in trade today, building on gains from yesterday's session. The pack as a whole gained about 2.6% in trade. And overall, the market breadth favored the advances. The outperformance of IT was very visible. If you look at the top gainers on the Nifty 50, the likes of Tech Mahindra, Tata Consultancy Services and Infosys making it in the top five. You also had the likes of Hero Motor Corp and very interestingly Bajaj Finserv, which gained despite languishing in the red uh, at the start of the session. Both Bajaj twins were in fact in the red because of the RBI uh, stricture or the uh, regulatory action that was taken ag against Bajaj fin Finance. Among the top losers, you had Axis Bank, Coal India, Adani Enterprises, Tata Consumer and ICICI Bank. Uh, a few mentions, uh, uh, apart from the ones that I've already done, uh, Work Heart has gained about 14% or thereabouts, and this is likely on account of a DGCI, or rather, yeah, it's a DGCI approval for WCK5222, which is a drug that is used to treat UTI. The Realty Index continues to gain traction. It was up about 0.9% and building strength from uh, building on strength uh, from the broader markets you had Sterlite Technologies, EIC and KNR Constructions that gained and among the losers you had Kalyan Jewelers, Wellspun India and Jyoti Labs that stood out. For now we're still looking at 20,000 as a possibility on the Nifty 50 perhaps next week. All right now as we approach the election season coupled with lowering inflation what does the future hold for the consumption space? Alf Accurate Advisors founder Rajesh Kothari shares his outlook on the consumption theme. From here on, in fact, if you ask my personal view, from here on, we are very bullish on consumption theme. Because first, you are, this is the year where, if you look at the government spend, the MSP price is for two important crops, wheat and uh, rice both, uh, wheat and paddy both, they have increased a sharp increase in both these. And these are the two most important crops for rural economy, correct? So we will see uh, from here on a better rural economy revival driven by better MSP prices supported by government, number one. Number two, this is election year. So you will see significant spend on the rural side of it. Number three, your base, of course, is in your favor. Number four, the inflation is coming down. So the purchasing power of rural economy is going to be better, which got impacted significantly, particularly the lower strata. If your inflation runs at 10, 12, 20 percent, because food items, inflation was very high, correct? Um, it's, it's definitely the, it gets impacted. The consumption gets impacted. So that will also drive the demand, correct? So all these factors will lead to better demand growth for the consumption sector from here on in our view. And we are from now on, because we have been actually underweight, uh, you know, the many parts of uh, within consumption sector in our portfolios. But from here on, I think it makes very interesting space because the valuations are also compressed from last three years. Many of the companies have not done anything and uh, the demand growth is going to be better. Gross margins expansion we are already seeing. It means the earnings growth will also follow. Tata Technologies IPO is all set to open on November 22nd, set at a price band of 475 to 500 rupees per share. Now, BQ Prime spoke to Managing Director and CEO Warren Kevin Harris to understand the company's margin aspirations over the coming years. If you look at our business, you know, we are not an India out company. 
Uh, and uh, and so we have a balanced onshore offshore proposition. You know, if you look at some of our competitors here in India, yeah. you know, their their offshore rates are 70 and 80 percent, where if you look at our rates, they are typically 50 50 in terms of revenue. We think that we can uh, we can improve offshore uh, to about 65, 70 percent. But because we are being entrusted with full vehicles, because we have to interface with the stakeholder groups inside of the OEM. We have to have people in the styling studio. We have to work with the suppliers. We have to work in the production facilities. We don't think that we're going to be able to get beyond 65, 70%. And so we, um, we certainly have aspirations to, uh, to take our margins over the next three or four years uh, beyond 20%. But, um, but we, uh, we do not believe that we'll be able to achieve the sort of margins the uh, you know the upper twenty margins of uh, of some of the IT service providers. TCS was buzzing in trade today on the back of fixing a record date for its seventeen thousand crore rupee buyback. On the other hand, the IT major is caught in a storm over transfer of employees. My colleague Tushar Deep Singh joins us with all the details. There was some good news and some bad news involving TCS today, and the stock reacted accordingly. First, the good news. TCS has set 25th November as a record date for its 17,000 crore buyback, its fifth in six years. On that day, the company will start the process to repurchase 4.09 crore shares, equivalent to 1.12 percent stake, at rupees 4,100 rupees, 550 rupees apiece. That's a 20.45 percent premium to the volume weighted average market price of the stock. Naturally, the stock jumped nearly 3 percent today. Now to the bad news, which in no way affected the stock. Knights and IT Employees Union has written to the Labor Ministry accusing TCS of unethical transfer practices for its employees. TCS has been engaging in a quote-unquote systematic pattern of forcing employees to have transferred to a new location without proper consultation. That's hurting employees and their families, Knights said. While TCS didn't respond to a request for comment, a source said such transfers and notices are routine and common practice. This is also done on the basis of TCS's needs, project requirements, and for some candidates seeking transfer, the source said. It was a bumper festive season for Hero Motor Corp. The company recorded highest ever festive retail sales. And driving the growth was rural India. Vinay Kulbe takes us through all those details. Hero Motor Corp today said that it registered its highest ever festive season sales of 14 lakh units in the 32-day period from Navratra to Bhai Dooj. It said that it surpassed its previous high of 12.7 lakh units in the 2019 festive season before COVID. Sales in the festive period this time around rose 19% year on year because of the strong sales across rural markets. The company said due to these strong sales, the post-festive channel inventory went down to a three-year low. This could also be a sign of turnaround in the two-wheeler industry because Hero Motor Corp is its largest player in the country. And with festive season, it seems that a new season of growth might have begun for the two-wheeler industry. A recent SBI research report highlighted several misplaced unemployment data interpretations in the public domain. Here's SBI's Group Chief Economic Advisor, Somya Kanti Ghosh, explaining key factors that must be taken into account when assessing youth unemployment data. If you ask a person in India that, are you employed or not? Are you earning an income? He will always say yes. But if you ask him, are you employed? He may say no. So how does these two basically map each other? So, but without getting into such, my point is that just in terms of simple statistics, 41 million uh, students are enrolled today in different universities, colleges across India. And that basically should not come in the denominator. So what it is happening is that if it, that is coming in, if that number is taken into consideration, that has, number has been adjusted, then the unemployment obviously should be much lower than 10% than what we are seeing today. It is, it is factually not possible to have a 10% youth unemployment rate and an overall unemployment rate of 3.2%. This The two figures doesn't match because a person who is getting unemployed at a young age, it means that the people are, no people are getting employed at a young age, only people in the older age are getting employed, so therefore we have an unemployment rate of 3.2%. Just in plain common sense also, this doesn't make any sense. So my simple sense is that 15 to 29, yes, 
look into this but also take education as an important factor in adjusting this youth unemployment all right that's all we have for you and let's talk business more news and updates after a very short break